Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. So today uh, I will be speaking on 2G ethanol. And this 2G ethanol is totally uh, different from that of the conventional production processes which uh, the, uh, in general people, they adopt for technology development. Let's go. So uh, I, I don't want to go for uh, this explanation of these slides. Uh, so that uh, this is a, a trend where we can see that demand is continuously getting increased for this uh, fuel as well as transportation. Next. So there is a huge gap between the production and the demand. So supply and demand is totally unbalanced in today's condition. Next. So, uh, and at the same time, what we have also felt that in the name of development of any technology, there should not be any process product development which may create the environmental or pollution or other issues. Next. Which are creating uh, the life miserable. So, with these few things keeping in mind, we have uh, developed or uh, we have planned for going for this 2G ethanol production. Next. This is our very small Pikesina Center for Bioenergy Research at IIT Kharagpur. And we have established here the pilot plant facilities for 2G ethanol. Next. So the USP, so when I'm talking about uh, very uh, many things about the conventional practices, the USP of our process is that it is completely enzyme-based production technology, where not a tinge of chemicals we have used for the production of ethanol. And as it is enzyme-based, so obviously the entire production, the reactions are taking place in extremely mild environmental condition. Being enzymatic process, the use of water has been drastically reduced than the conventional practices. And as it is the biotechnology based product, so we are telling that it is eco-friendly and environmental uh, friendly technology, green technology. Next. So this is the different residual. So before putting our hand, we have taken the statistics for the residual uh, remaining of uh, the Indian uh, produced uh, grains. And we tried to, next, we tried to utilize our, uh, this information for the production of our 2G ethanol. Now, when we have classified this lignocellulosics, that one issue came into the picture is food fodder versus fuel. So what we have emphasized that we will be going for some lignocellulosics which doesn't have any role in food or that fodder uh, values. So we, and it is produced in huge quantity in India. So ricinus commune is, is one of such castor oil. It is getting produced under uh, contract farming. And we have taken this ricinus commune is the lignocellulosic part, lantana camera, cans grass, sugarcan bagas and sugarcan top. This we have added uh, later on, wheat straw, rice straw, banana plant, sweet sorghum, pineapple, leaf waste, and bambusa bambu. Few of these raw materials are plenty available in the eastern and northeastern belt of India, but it is not getting properly processed. And this raw material is used as the waste material in today's scenario. So we consider this lignocellulosics to be converted to 2G ethanol. Next. So uh, when we saw the production processes, pretreatment, hydrolysis, and fermentation, these are the three major steps for 2G ethanol. So pretreatment in general, people use different chemicals or physicochemical processes to remove the lignin as the barrier. So what we thought of to substitute this process 
with the enzymes and that enzyme is getting produced in situ and that enzyme should be a robust enzyme and we are using this enzyme for 2G ethanol and it is going as a package technology. Next. So lacase is one of such technology which is, which is taking care of the first part, that lignin removal. So if we see the lacases, they are, there are different types of lacases like yellow lacase, blue lacase, white lacase, and we are working with different lacases and their mechanism of action on delignification. And we successfully established the delignification process for this particular 2G ethanol production. Next. When we have seen that enzymatic method, what we have found is that being non-chemical based process, here we are trying, we are use capable of using each and every biomolecule, not a single molecule is getting lost. As a result, what we are getting is that there is a percent increase in the yield of ethanol production. And not a single molecule is getting lost in this particular process which we have developed. Next. So there are so, some uh, process optimization with different types of lacases. Next. <coughs> doing this, uh, uh, this delignification process, we found that until and unless we have a very good cellulolytic enzyme which can efficiently convert the holocellulose to reducing sugar, process cannot be economically viable. So what we did that along with the uh, development of delignification process, we were in search of some cellulolytic enzymes which can take care of the C5 as well as C6 sugars and that can be converted to uh, ethanol. Next. So in search of that, when we got this particular uh, uh, this, uh, strain isolation, what we have seen that the enzyme should be that robust which will not be getting inhibited with the intermediates which are getting produced during delignification process. Because when lignin is getting uh, hydrolyzed, some alcohols, some phenolics and some other acids are also getting produced which are sometimes inhibitory to the enzymatic action. And what we have seen that here the enzyme which we were in search of uh, isolating this and uh, that establishing this uh, sacrification process is not getting inhibited with the intermediates which are getting produced during delignification. Next. So then we started going for the biochemical analysis for cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin for different lignocellulosics which we were, use, uh, we were planned to use for the ethanol production. Next. After delignification, we were very much interested to see whether lignin has been successfully removed or not. Next. We went for scanning electron microscopy. We went for FTIR analysis. Next, we went for XRD. And next, we went for the establishment of this uh, particular scientific part is that yes, there is increased in the percent crystallinity, which is giving us the positive response that lignin has been removed. So when this is the positive uh, feedback which we started getting, people started asking this is not enough. Next. We went for the porosity analysis and we found that with the removal of the lignin, the pore size of the lignocellulosics are also getting increased. So this is also, so when we got this information, people started believing that yes, lignin is really a robust enzyme which is acting on the delignification process. Next. Then we went for the sacrification because by that time we got our enzyme, uh, the cellulolytic enzyme which is 
efficiently converting this holocellulose, holocellulosic material to reducing sugar. We went for different techniques of fermentation, separate hydrolysis and fermentation, simultaneous sac sacrification and fermentation, consolidated by processing, partial consolidated, and simultaneous sacrification and co-fermentation. Different parameters we have studied, and it is a rigorous study of each and every raw material, and we have optimized the maximum amount of ethanol under different, and you will be wondering <coughs> that each raw material is behaving differently in the fermentation process. Next. <coughs> This is the consolidated bioprocess. You see, here we have named this technology as soil-to-soil -soil technology. Lignocellulosic raw material we are getting from the soil. We are processing it enzymatically, and we are going for this ethanol production. Liquid ethanol is getting isolated, and we are taking the solid and subjected to uh, anaerobic digestion, and we are getting the methane as the byproduct, and the carbon dioxide, which is getting produced during biomethanation process, is getting isolated, separated, and we are going for the algal pond <coughs> cultivation for oleogenous uh, microbes uh, cultivation for biodiesel production. And after the lipid isolation, the Biomass is once again coming back to the sacrificing tank, and it is used for the ethanol production. The liquid effluent that ethanol is used for the, uh, this petroleum substitute, and after uh, biomethanation uh, process, the residual solid, which is left over, is once again getting recycled back to biomanure, and it is once again applied to the soil. So this is the consolidated bioprocess, which biorefinery approach, which we have taken for this particular biorefinery process. Next. So this is the Kojiro uh, premises which uh, we have established for the enzyme production at IIT Kharagpur. Next. This is, I think, this is the world's simplest pilot plant facilities where we can process 550 kgs of biomass uh, for ethanol production. Next. These are some of these attachments. Next. These are, next. So these are some of the publications. Next. So this, this is the uh, prototype which uh, I, I have uh, explained to the Minister of uh, Human Resource and Development. Next. These are the patents uh, which we have uh, filed uh, based on this technology, next. And these are some of the paper uh, cutting, next. So this is, this is a huge work since last more than uh, almost one and a half decades. So these are some of the research scholars who have worked with each of the raw material and they have got their PhD degree. So you can understand that how concisely I have told uh, about their research <laughs> activities within 12 minutes of time. I know. And uh, when, next slide. So uh, when we have gone for the cost analysis, because cost is very important for 2G ethanol, and when we have gone for the cost analysis, now, uh, happily, I can tell that we can produce a liter of ethanol within 30 rupees. And it is if we are, if, if we are taking the byproduct, high value byproduct, and we are costing that, then ethanol is getting produced as byproduct without any cost. And this is the circular economy, and we are just talking about the biorefinery approach, which at present we are handling at IIT Kharagpur. Thank you very much. <laughs>